Uh, sorry, before we go off, um, one significant footnote there, of course, is that um, now, uh, at this pa particular moment, um, each uh, army has one exhausted division. So that means that the score, as it were, at the moment is 1-1. One, one. So um, as far as what the future holds, we shall see. So we arrive at the end of the French 8 p.m. movement. And as usual, we have a number of interesting situations developing. Uh, things are starting to get pretty crowded on the way to uh, Quatre Bras because uh, now we've got each uh, hour, each turn, we have another uh, division of Delon's Corps arriving. And uh, we can see the, the latest division that's arrived here. Um, things are so crowded that we've got, um, uh, let's see, who is it? Uh, De Bal and his uh, cavalry division here actually hasn't moved. Uh, because there's frankly no way for it to go in order to do anything in time that will make any difference whatsoever to the battle uh, because things are just too darn congested. Um, so, uh, going as usual from left to right, uh, and remember this is at the end of movement, so this is before any morale tests and before any combat. Um, we have a little bit of combat over here, the uh, lancers over here have decided to charge the uh, sharpshooters who had come out of the uh, Bois de Bossieux in order to be able to fire on the lancers. So they are in the open and the lancers were close enough to them that uh, the skirmishers did not have an opportunity to flee into the uh, Bois de Bossieux. So they are actually going to be eliminated as being caught in the open. Um, by the uh, lancers, um, the these are actually uh, uh, they're actually chasseurs, and they um, have moved away slightly from the uh, skirmishers down here, so that they can um, preserve themselves better uh, and not contribute to division exhaustion. Um, they thought about going into the wood, but they, that would have meant they would have pushed the skirmishers away, yes, but then they would have been disordered, which I didn't like, because then they could have been attacked whilst disordered, which could have mean, meant that they might have routed, which would not have been good again for division exhaustion. Um, so that's over there. There's been a general moving up. Uh, as I say, this division has now arrived, although actually all these troops here, the cavalry, Bachelot, as usual, is hanging back, so his division doesn't get exhausted. Um, Foy has an exhausted division now, so he's just staying there in place. Um, and we've got uh, this artillery, this heavy artillery battery has become stationary, so that's a potent force. Um, more of Delon's troops arriving. This brigade has moved up here uh, on the outskirts, not in, but on the outskirts of the uh, Bois de Bossieux facing um, Alton's troops here. Um, the other uh, brigade that was with them is split off over in this direction. Um, let's see, we've got the cavalry that uh, had crossed here at the bridge has now been able to move down as far as this position. Um, it probably won't be able to do anything. and We're running out of time here. Uh, artillery has moved forward a bit. This uh, artillery is deployed and ready to fire in this direction. The main serious stuff that's going on is um, we've got four French brigades, um, one of which is, um, I think this extreme one over here, is uh, uh, Durand's troops. And then these three are Prince Jerome. This one couldn't make it into the, into the uh, front line because it had to recover from disorder and was... Um, back here so we've got these now they've deliberately put themselves normally they would have been putting themselves within 400 yards of the enemy uh, preparatory to being able to charge them uh, in the next turn but because we want to we, we need to do some serious pounding here what they've done is they've gone forward into musket range now this does mean fortunately for them it means that the uh, we can see that the enemy that are facing them 
are either, well, none of them are stationary for a start. Uh, these are permanently disordered and they've just moved. Uh, but also the Allied commander, the Anglo-Allied commander, uh, took a big, bit of a risk here because those uh, Brunswickers were moved rather freely around uh, and they're facing in completely the wrong direction. The idea there was um, the idea there was that um, they couldn't be charged in this turn, and that's true, but they can be fired upon, and they are facing in the wrong direction, so they can't return fire. Um, so that could lead to some serious problems. Um, and then in other news, uh, the cuirassier who have been floating around the battlefield, uh, ready to get their teeth into something, um, are now in a position to be able to uh, charge the um, Brunswick Light Division here in the next turn. Uh, and that should lead to some um, interesting combat. Um, the overall, uh, the, the grand um, strategic, the grand tactical plan, as it were, for the French commander is to try to exhaust that second division. Um, so if it, which is basically Brunswick, um, if Brunswick can be exhausted, then you'd have one, two exhausted divisions and the only exhausted division on the French side, um, if things go the French way, uh, will indeed be uh, Foy's division down here. So that would mean that the uh, the French had won. Uh, they might, if things get bad enough here, They, I mean, they may even be able to press their advantage to the extent of, of um, taking control of the... Um, line of communication here which is the uh the uh road to brussels um but uh that's i don't know things are pretty congested up there we've got uh pep on share he might get involved uh to try and um hold on to that so um anyway uh so now that we need to do um morale tests and then on to combat uh morale for anyone who is in melee the only melee situation we have is uh right here and the only um uh other reason would be if uh, in close range of the enemy's guns so we have that situation is the case there and we also have that situation here and uh so on we go and here we are at the end of the french turn so we've done our morale tests and we've done combat and uh, we see the situation as it stands. Um, as we might imagine, the uh, lancers, of course, destroyed the skirmishers that were caught in the open. Um, then beyond that, it was all shooting, no more melee. Uh, so we had the shooting here from the uh, heavy battalions, the French heavy battalions here and here. And um, they were able to... Uh, register some casualties and we get the figures here um, on Alton's um, division so Alton's division here actually lost that is to say sorry here actually lost um, two uh, strength points um, by virtue of the uh, pounding from the artillery but also the um, the skirmisher unit that was on the uh, just outside the uh, Bois de Bossieu that was lost also belonged to Alton so they took a uh, Three casualties um, there in 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 uh, in that turn. Um, then we had, of course, um, well, as I say, the morale te the morale tests were taken. Uh, nobody wavered in the morale tests. So then we had the uh, the shooting contests up here, up here um, against the uh, Brunswickers. Um, one casualty was caused. No casualties on the French. One casualty on the Brunswick. Um, uh light brigade here but the main event as we can see this uh scene of unspeakable slaughter was where um no casualties again were caused on the french which is not really surprising because the the enemy were uh neither stationary nor in good order um and the uh french uh unleashed their steady volleys against um picton's men and they, they actually caused two casualties, but that meant that as the division was exhausted, um, it still had to uh, test for um, morale collapse again. And, um, well, quite simply, they rolled a one. So that meant that the morale collapsed again, which meant that everybody who was disordered became routed 
and off they went. So Picton's division uh, no longer exists on this battlefield. Uh, all that's left, left is a scene of unspeakable slaughter. Um, now, if, of course, the next turn were the French turn, which it is not, the French could advance and uh, they could capture the, um, the line of communication up there. But it's not their turn next. The other thing that I, uh, that the, sorry, the French commander recalls now in his um, grand tactical planning of that turn was um, evidently he had not paid very much attention to um, outriders who were reporting that um, De Chasse uh, was approaching from uh, the direction of Nivelle and uh, could be expected to arrive at any moment. Um, and indeed, he will be um, arriving. <laughs> so he'll be coming down uh, from up here, up the, the road up here. So he's got another division, which can, of course, now in the Anglo-Allied turn, can move, if they wish, can move directly to the point of the line of communication there and occupy that position. I was thinking, oh, is it going to be Pierre Poncher who has to go over there and um, deal with that? But... Uh, no, it looks like uh, De Chasse should be able to march smartly down to that position and um, block the French from the uh, uh, Anglo-Allied uh, line of communication. That is the situation as we see it at the end of the uh, uh, French 8pm turn. And now... We find ourselves at the end of the Anglo-Allied movement in the 8 p.m. turn. So the French player uh, and Anglo-Allied player have one more turn each after this one. So this is the end of movement. We have not yet done morale and we have not yet done combat. And as we can see, uh, things are getting extremely congested in the area of uh, Catrobar itself and, of course, up there at the uh, Brussels Road, which is the line of communication for the Anglo-Allies. And if the French can take that, uh, they win the battle. Um, got into a very big traffic jam trying to um, accomplish whatever could be accomplished. The initial idea that the... Um, British commander had was that um, uh, de Chasse's arriving division, which came in on the, um, but would have been nice if it had come down the Brussels road, but it didn't. It came from the uh, Nivelle road and it could, it could not quite make it from the Nivelle road over to um, the, uh, the uh, Brussels road um, deployed. I mean, it could have done it in a march column, I suppose, but, um, uh, so therefore, instead of sending them over there, what was happening is De Chasse has been deployed here. So we've got these, uh, these brigades here and also this, um, artillery down here, um, ready to keep an eye on the, uh, the right flank. And, uh, the division that was here, which was Cook's division, has been sent over to the Brussels Road. They themselves were not able, they are, their brigades are here and here. They weren't able to actually make it to the, the road point itself. Uh, so also to beef things up, one uh, brigade was taken away from uh, Alton's troops here. The, the, this, this brigade is this brigade here, which was here on the edge of the wood. It wasn't actually in the wood because in Volian Bayonet, the rules tell us that the unit is taken to be in the terrain that is the uh, center point of the front rank. So in other words, that's there, that point there, which is outside the woods, although it may have looked like it was in the wood. Um, so they were able to, they were actually able to um, uh, change facing, move half their distance inclined and then um, pay half a move to uh, change facing and face off against the French. So of course, all those units are over there. None of them are um, stationary, as we might imagine. Um, but the thing is, <clears throat> oh, sorry. And then the other crucial thing that uh, took place was that um, the Duke of Brunswick's troops 
had to be withdrawn from this area here because the French can also, of course, win by exhausting um, two Allied divisions. Uh, and uh, they had a, a fair chance uh, at uh, doing that to Brunswick. So the idea was to get Brunswick out of the way um, so that the French would not be able to charge Brunswick's units um, in any strength. Um, <clears throat> of course, we've got the whole rule about um, not being able to uh, engage somebody in combat unless you're already within 400 yards. So it means that anyone who is outside of 400 yards of the French now, because the French only have one turn left, um, is an enemy that they will not be able to engage in melee. They can certainly engage in um, shooting, but not in melee. So, for example, the um, the Light Brigade here, the Brunswick Light Brigade, which uh, moved back to this position, um, can't be charged by the cavalry because the cavalry in their turn, all they could do is move within 400 yards and stop. And then they wouldn't have another turn before um, the battle was ended because things were getting too dark. Um, so that's what we have. Um, and uh, let's see, the other the other brigade of Brunswick has gone back to this point here, as we can see. All very congested. Pierre Poncher basically just, um, he stayed there to keep his men out of the way. Um, and so on we go to morale and combat. And that was uneventful. Uh, everybody passed their morale tests. There are only a few. And uh, there was uh, some desultory fire, which had no results whatsoever. And uh, we move on to the final turn. Uh, the final um, hour, I suppose, of the battle, we might say. The 9 p.m. hour. So we go on to the French 9 p.m. turn. And here we are at the end of uh, movement of the uh, French final turn of the game. That's the 9 p.m. turn. Um, we've had the last of the uh, reinforcements have come on of uh, Delon's um, corps. Uh, that's uh, this division here has just arrived. And as we can see, we've got this uh, enormous traffic jam here. The, the troops at the back here, pretty much um, the French commander decided that as far as these men are concerned here in this region, um, the men the men are tired and uh, there's little more for them to do uh, because there's a sodding great traffic jam and um, this uh, high standing crops, these high standing crops uh, do slow one down a fair bit. So yes, they've arrived and we've got all this cavalry, for example, we've got uh, two divisions of infantry here. But uh, they can't do anything, so um, it's um, it, it's nice to see them. It's been a while. Um, and then over on the extreme left of the French position, um, Pirey's uh, cavalry have actually withdrawn just in case the uh, Allied commander has any last-minute idea of a sort of death or glory run up to the cavalry by um, these chaps over here, which are uh, de chasse. Uh, to run up to the cavalry and take pot shots at them to try and exhaust Pigre's, um division. So they've been withdrawn uh, So to, to limit the possibility of that happening. And as we can imagine, uh, what's happened in the central position is that the French commander has basically tried to squeeze everything that he can get his hands on uh, to attack uh, the uh, valiant... Uh, Brunswick Light Brigade, which is hanging on there um, to the um, Anglo-Allied line of communication, the Brussels Road. Uh, it was a very difficult position to um, attack because the situation was so congested. There was a very small um, uh, gap uh, into which uh, troops could be um, f filed off to, uh, to uh, approach the Brunswickers. And um, so in the end, all, we, all the French commander was able to do was get this brigade here, which is um, in a position to be now to be able to open fire this turn. Um, also get, uh, there were two batteries of um, horse artillery, which are able to be moved up here and unlim lim unlimbered so that they can fire at them, um, which is all well and good. 
And uh, let's see here. Uh, we also then had, because it's still part of the Brunswick Division, so we then had um, these two brigades have um, honed in on uh, this uh, Brunswick um, battery here to see if they can fire at that and uh, destroy it. Good luck with that. Um, and other than that, uh, let's see, maybe a few little twitches of movement around and about to uh, sort of clear retreat paths for some forces that might retreat. Um, but that's the situation after the French movement, and we now go on to... Um, morale tests and combat. Okay, uh, there were no morale test. Sorry, we're now at the end of the, the complete end of the uh, French 9 p.m. turn. Um, that's the last French turn. We just have one Anglo-Allied turn left. Um, morale checks, there were only a few. They were passed. Uh, then we had some shooting, which did result in some losses. Um, not as many as the French would have liked, but um, there we are. Uh, so we had, um, of course, we had um, shooting in this direction here, this direction here. We, we did manage to cause, uh, no, sorry, that, that caused no casualties. Uh, then the French had, um, they had two horse batteries here. And this brigade were firing on the Brunswick Light Brigade here. And um, unfortunately for the French, all of that only managed to cause one casualty on the uh, Brunswick Brigade. Um, then we also had uh, shooting from these two brigades here, firing at the uh, Brunswick Artillery. That was for no loss at all. Um, and in return, the British here fired upon the um, French horse battery that was here, what was uh, Corps troops uh, from Delon's Corps, and eliminated it. So we had one point of loss for the French and one point of loss for the Anglo Allies. Now what that means is, is because I've, I've done a little calculation here, what that means is now um, Brunswick is only two points away from division exhaustion. So it's the Allies' turn next. So the question is, is it possible for Brunswick, because no other division is significant at this point, is it possible that Brunswick could lose two strength points in the next turn? And as I make it, it is not possible. Um, the, the point is, of course, is that you can have defensive fire, so the French can fire in the Anglo-Allied turn if they are attacked by the Anglo Allies, but if the Anglo Allies don't attack them, then they can't shoot back. But they can shoot with any uh, troops that are within um, close range. But the only troops they have within close range, remembering always that close range for smoothbore muskets is contact. So the only troops they have in close range would be um, artillery. And there's only one artillery unit that is in that situation, which is this horse battery here. And of course, a horse battery can only cause one casualty. So even if that horse battery said, I'm in close range, I'm shooting at the Brunswick Light Division, at Light Brigade, sorry, here. It, uh, and if it did uh, score a hit, that would still only be one hit, which would mean that Brunswick's division couldn't become exhausted. So as I see it at the moment, um, we haven't gone into the anglo ally turn yet. I'm not actually sure if it's going to be played out because at the moment, um, the, you could say that the French player uh, has, um, or might be obliged to concede. I mean, we can say, oh, we'll play the battle out anyway, see what happens. But what's going to happen is the anglo ally player is going to make sure that whatever he does he isn't going to take any losses. So actually all he has to do is stay exactly where he is and not fire on the French. And if he does that, then he can't possibly take any more uh, division ex divisions exhausted. And so that would mean that if we recall, we had um, Picton's core, which, actually, which is actually one division. So Picton's division and core indeed, was um, not only exhausted, but collapsed. So it's gone. So that's one division exhausted. 
and then on the French side, uh, the French had the exhaustion of um, Foy's division here, okay? So that's one each. And in this scenario, um, if they both, sorry, if they're tied, then um, the Anglo allies win. Um, as we can see, it's awfully close because, I mean, the, you know, well, I mean, whether the French could take this position and, you know, when and how long and they could hold it for and so forth and so on. It's a bit of a muddle up there, but we are we are literally in terms of a finely balanced scenario. That would mean that um, the Anglo allies would be uh, well, they've got two strength points in hand. But even if the French uh, took away one of those, they'd have one strength point left. So it is fairly finely balanced. And um, I mean, obviously, with the uh, with all the vagaries of what the commanders actually did in this battle and the uh, uh, chance uh, rolling dice and so forth and so on. We can also see I don't want to start reviewing uh, the battle as a whole yet, but oh, gosh, I can't wait saying one thing. We can see that um, uh, in terms of uh, Danon's reinforcements, um, and also in terms of uh, Kalaman's reinforcements. So we've got the, these two brigades here for Kalaman. And then we've got uh, Delon's reinforcements. We've got uh, two divisions here, um, which uh, haven't seen any action. Um, and then we've got other divisions further back, I suppose. I, I think, what is it? These chaps. Uh, first division, first, yeah, this, this is a division here, that one and that one, this brigade, this brigade. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they're moving into position, but I don't believe they fired a shot or had a shot fired at them. So that's six brigades of uh, Derlon's corps. Um, I think only, is it only, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think perhaps only one of the divisions of Derlon's corps has actually fired a shot. Uh, which is to say that one there. Um, so, and this, remember, this is the scenario where Delon arrives. Uh, well, Delon arrives, as it were. He arrives early as opposed to his whole corps arriving, at, which is like half the French army, arriving at um, the last turn, 9 p.m. Um, so uh, Delon arrived at uh, his first forces, arrived i think it was at um let's see here 6 p.m so we've had six seven eight and nine p.m his forces have come on um and um it's been it's been too late in the main because they're, they're just so choked up on the road and they're a long way away but anyway um the, the battle's not uh technically over yet because the allies could still have a turn i'll think it over and uh well we shall see